Good. Thank you all so much for joining me here for the last story time of the day. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. Wonderful. Tiny Cap, how are you doing today? You are just adorable. <laughs> wow. Very nice. All right. Well, is everybody excited for a story? Yeah. yeah. All right. Shout out the name of your favorite story. Star Wars, Harry Potter, did I hear Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> oh, there's a 4.0 student showing off. All right, well, we're not going to do any of those. We're going to do one of my personal favorite stories. You see, this story is a beloved bedtime classic, and it was mashed up with a very profitable licensing agreement. Yeah, this story is Cinderpool. <laughs> That's not real. All right. <laughs> Once upon a time, you know, it just doesn't feel right when I do that with myself. We should all say those magical words together. Ready? Once upon a time. That was the best one of the day. Wow, congrats. <sighs> Cinderpool lived in a big enchanted mansion with his step professor and step mutants. The biggest of those step mutants, Colossus, was always making up silly rules around the house like, don't put your initials on other people's leftovers in the fridge, and for the love of Feige, quit Donald ducking around the house. What is wrong with you? Put some pants on. Have... <clears throat> anyway, the other main step mutant, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who has two fans here. That's great. She was always texting and rolling her eyes. She was so Gen Z. Both of these mutants were very jealous of Cinderpool because Cinderpool had a much larger fan base. <laughs> Apparently I'm just gonna go get Colossus to finish the story. One day, an expendable and non-union extra went running in front of the mansion, screaming. King Thanos was going to have the biggest battle of phase three. And we all know that was the last good phase. Oh, yeah. Cinderpool desperately wanted to go to the big battle, but Cobasis said, No. <laughs> It is too dangerous, and you are not a good part of the team. <laughs> then he ripped apart Cinderpool's best costume, and Negasonic blasted the pieces with her mind powers. It was so cool, so Gen Z, so on fleek, no cap, Sigma, Skibbity, Ohio. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Cinderpool was distraught. Vulnerable and exposed as he stumbled out onto the mansion grounds, weeping for dramatic effect. But then, he looked up and saw, beginning to form, a magical golden sparkle circle. And we really like sparkle circles here, okay. And out of that sparkle circle stepped his fairy hairy god mutant, Wolverine! <laughs> right through the sparkle circle, Wolvie. Just, I'll move it around. Right. There we are, Wolverine! Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this is my fairy god. Oh, fairy god mutant Wolverine! I desperately want to go to the big battle, but my mean step means destroyed my costume. Shut up. He said lovingly, what? I'm doing a story, Wolvie. You know, my costume's been destroyed. I can't go to the battle. You're my god mutant. Use your magic stick and make a pumpkin do something. I don't have a magic stick, okay? Stop writing me into these stories. Just get a new costume. Well, with that sage and somewhat Australian life advice, Cinderpool ran to the wardrobe department, grabbed a new freshly laundered costume, and headed to the big battle. 
<sighs> Cinder Pool was late, of course, because he stopped for some chimichangas at 7-Eleven. Yeah. That's right. But 7-Eleven doesn't sell chimichangas anymore, so he had to go to three other gas stations. Circle K, don't even get me sick. Anyway, when he got there, the Avengers were winning. Captain America looked so good in those pants. <laughs> Cinderpool looked for his fairy god mutant Wolverine, who was... I'm going to Pims. It's fine. Disney didn't own the rights to him at this point anyway. <laughs> Cinderpool surveyed the battlefield and saw on the stairs of the alien ship a single glove. Cinderpool picked that glove up. It's a nice camera. It was a beautiful glove, gold, encrusted with colorful jewels. There were six of them, not that that matters. He said, I wonder who this fits, and put it on. Uh huh. All the Avengers see this, and they start running over, screaming, Cinderpool! Take it off! Let someone else make that sacrifice! Whatever you do, do not snap! And you know what Cinderpool does? Snap. Cinderpool snapped. Both physically and mentally, does it all the time. Just kept snapping too. People are disappearing, reappearing. Dogs are falling out of the sky. Everybody's crying. It was super expensive for the VFX department. But eventually Cinderpool stopped. Everybody was back. Except for the people that texted the movies, we didn't want them back, we just let them. Yeah, that's right. Cinderpool was the hero who'd saved the universe. Oh, yeah. Then, all the Avengers tackle Cinderpool to the ground, rip the glove right off of his hand, blah blah blah, years later they remake the film, they use AI to put Tony Stark's head on my beautiful body, and it goes on to become the most profitable film in the Feige universe, the FCU. But it's okay, because Cinderpool went on to start his own film franchise, which breaks box office records! And then they had to invite Cinderpool back to the Avengers Endgame 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the real story of the Endgame. Wait, did that start as a Cinderella riff? It's fine, we all enjoyed the journey. Thank you all so much for joining me. This is my final story time with Deadpool. You're all so wonderful. Thank you so much. It's been just a pleasure, but I'm going to go now because it's so hot in this suit. All right, bye now. Bye.